Let's talk about Google. I want to talk about it through the lens, the lens of competition before I actually talk about what they announced. Um, you know, a lot of the press that we talked to, Pat, and you talked to a lot of press, I talked to a lot of press about this announcement was kind of like, is this going to, you know, is Google, you know, screwed <laughs> here? Is this, you know, game over for Google? So we all know Google has gotten into cloud and we know Google has some big bets, but Google's revenue largely comes from from search. It's search on Google, it's search on YouTube, it's it's advertising. And make no mistake about it, the advertising model of yesterday is is going to be disrupted significantly. And I'll make it really easy. When you try the new Bing, there's going to be a left side and a right side, okay? The left side is basically going to look like the search of yesteryear. Now for Bing, this was a big watershed moment because Bing search on the left side, I don't know about you, Pat, I know we got to be, you know, we want to be diplomatic here, but it was like, I use Edge browser, but I, I go to Google for search. I just don't find the Bing searches to historically have been very good. Now with this new model, um, it's already better. So I already noticed straight away, the, the searches are closer in quality to Google. That's a big thing because that, what's that? Interesting. Yeah. So again, this is my early readout. I haven't spent a ton of time with it, but my early readout is the traditional search has improved from where it was. But the right side of the screen is the generative AI. The right side of the screen is where it, it, it'll prompt, it'll fill things in, or you scroll up and you get to the natural language processing where you actually add the chat function to actually query that way by searching using questions and then prompting additional questions and seeing multi-turn conversational AI where you're getting more data uh, and more insights. And that's really interesting. And that's going to change everything. And this is what Google really has to answer to is, is the history of display ads. The history is you search something, you'd find results, and they could populate ads around it so that you could target some sort of commercial activity, whether that's buying a product or clicking on a, on a link that somebody has set up to get on a to set up to pay per click to a website. The generative AI sort of does a lot of abstracting and summation. So, you know, I ask the question, you know, um, you know, help me set up a vacation, a five day vacation for Mexico, you know, and I wanna basically, you know, they showed this kind of example. And give me an itinerary. Well, this thing literally draws out a five day itinerary. And then, you, you know, the example was, well then write, help me write a letter. <laughs> that I could share with my family that kind of explains the trip to everybody. Yeah. So in that whole generative process, it ends up creating kind of a, a flow of content that historically you would have had to click through. You would have clicked through to a travel zoo website. You would have clicked through to an Expedia website. You would have clicked through and you would have had to kind of aggregate all this. Well, it's done this for you. So it, it begs a question about the business model. So because right now Google gets paid by all those companies every time you ended up clicking on one of those sites. What's Microsoft's plan? Meaning that, you know, they say, well, they, we still think people are going to click. I'm saying, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure people are going to click and I'm certain they're going to click less. So this is what Google is kind of up against too, is if people can go to Bing and you can get a letter written, you can get an itinerary plan, you can get, and you can get it all generated in AI in a single readable window that doesn't require clicking down, how do you replace the economic value? And so even in Microsoft's $2 billion per percent question, this needs to be answered because if people aren't clicking on the display ads, where does the money come from? I do think there's going to be an interesting opportunity from a model standpoint, Pat, for people to put, um, <laughs> to basically pay to be uh, prioritized in the model, meaning it's going to be different where you generatively come up by priority. Because Pat, if there's 10,000 travel articles, how does ChatGPT decide which ones get prioritized? Really interesting question. Can you build uh, training in to train to prioritize certain models based upon, hey, I think so. I think that's possible. So long story short, I'll get here on BART. I'll do, make a minute and I'm gonna hand that over to you to talk more about that. But BART is going to do similar things. Google didn't really tell us much about what it is. They basically said, this is in dispute and we have something coming and it's gonna be very exciting. My guess personally was they had no intention of rolling it out this soon. Um, they were forced to move everything forward. I also want to say, though, as an advocate of, of Google, is I don't see the business changing as much as people think. I do see Microsoft picking up a couple points of market share near term because there will be a lot of enthusiasm and excitement about this. 
But if Google can land quickly, they have a couple of massive advantages. One is search on mobile. Every Android device defaults to Google. And honestly, right now, I think Apple too. It defaults to Google, even when you search in Safari. So right now, the fact that the whole mobile ecosystem leads with Google is still going to be a massive hurdle for Microsoft. So there's a lot more I want to say about that, but I've talked a lot straight in a row. So I want to hand it back to you and let you kind of cover the rest of this one. Listen, this is needs a lot more effort than five to 10 minutes. Uh, I am glad you brought up the cost piece because even for Microsoft, the cost per transaction uh, is, is, is troubling. It's only troubling because there wasn't a thesis provided. I did appreciate on Microsoft's analyst call that uh, they did, you know, kind of get in, into what I thought was a profit dollar, which is, listen, we're not part of this market share right now. It's all accretive. So don't even worry about how much this costs if we can make, make, uh, make a ton of money on it. Uh, I, I completely understand that. But uh, so Google stock, I think decline in total, what, 10, 15 percent in uh, in two days, lost over one hundred billion dollars uh, in value. And I understand why <laughs> I got up at seven thirty, I guess, five thirty Pacific uh, to watch Google's uh, AI event. And essentially the key message is is they talked about Google supremacy in AI today right across photo, translate, lens. And I think it has a really good point. I mean, these are all products that, that I use, less lens, more photos and, and translate, and some of the interesting stuff that they, they infuse into, into Gmail. But, but they, they do have the consumer uh, lead today, no doubt. And on the commercial side and the cloud side, they use AI pretty effectively as a land and expand uh, tool. Uh, the other key message was, you know, hey, these LLMs, large language models are not new to us. Essentially, we rewrote the book uh, on it in 2017, right, uh, which they went out of their way. But but then they, they went into BARD, but it's super light, right? And, and I think, you know, what got everybody excited was um, that the answer was wrong. I think it could be debatable if it was wrong, but by the way, um, all the searches I've done on the new AI infused Bing, they're not always right. But when you're doing a demo, you darn better get it right. The examples that Microsoft used on stage, uh, I video, I videoed many of them, and so did you. They were they were perfect. Uh, the video cut off early. I mean, you can see on my Twitter feed uh, the the video went private. Be, for me before the entire event was over. That does not uh, imbue confidence. One of the biggest things that, one of the bigger mistakes I think Google made was they said, right, this is right, this is literally, I don't know, 12 hours after Microsoft opens up um, these new features to millions of people. Um, Google says, that Bard is now with trusted testers. And listen, uh, sometimes I've been accused of, of saying that the world revolves around me, Pat, or you think the world revolves around me, but essentially, you know, Dan, uh, have you received your invite as a trusted tester for Bard? Dan? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm answering to the um, uh, no. Yeah. So unless I, have I didn't get, unless I missed an email. <laughs> yeah, so so I haven't either, and therefore you and I are not trusted. Um, and I think that is an absolute mistake, and they should have thought through how they uh, use those words. What I think they were trying to communicate is that gener generative AI is scary, okay? And we can't just unleash it onto the world. Um, but they didn't stick that one at all, and their stock was down and they got clobbered. Uh, now, I'm going to talk out of the other side of my mouth or what might seem like that and say this is a very long game. You do not, do not replace somebody who's number one uh, overnight, uh, even when we saw the fascination of what were brand new social media sites like Twitter uh, and Instagram. It didn't just make Facebook uh, go away. 
right? So it's going to be, you know, the ball, though, is certainly in uh, Google's court uh, by judging in what happened to the stock price, which I think what a lot was fueled by what Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella uh, said in, in interviews, essentially saying, you know, the profit margin of the advertising industry is going to get a radical reconstruction. Those weren't were, those weren't his exact words. Those were my takeaways. I totally get uh, what's going to happen. So if I'm Google moving forward, I would go out and get a lot of feedback, not pretend like sometimes I think Google sometimes uh, appears to me that hey, we don't need to talk to anybody or ask anybody's input because we're the smartest people in the room. I think that's a mistake right now. And I think they should be asking if they're not already, their trusted stakeholders, uh, smart people uh, on what they think their next steps should be.